So Sanjay, Sanjay, shall I start now? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to this media briefing session on uh, sports injuries on the occasion of the National Sports Day. Uh, Dr. Renu Dadlia, consultant sports and musculoskeletal physician and interventional pain specialist, um, IPSC, is among the foremost specialists in Bengaluru in the field of sports injuries. Uh, she's, a, she's a very high qualified doctor with an experience going back to several decades. Uh, this interaction will be in the format of a uh, question and answer session. We will be asking uh, questions to Dr. Renu, who will be sharing key insights on several aspects of sports injuries. Everyone, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions to her whenever convenient. Thank you uh, for taking the time out to be with us. And if you miss anything, don't worry. A recorded version of this session will also be available. Dr. Renu, may I request you to tell us a little bit of yourself and, and your experience and background. Okay. Hi, uh, good afternoon everyone. I'm Dr. Renu and Dr. Renu Dadiala. Uh, Mega, you got my uh, pronunciation wrong with my surname. So, um, <laughs> uh, I'm, a sports, I'm a sports medicine uh, physician and my background is um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a trained anesthetist and a lifestyle physician and I gradually moved into sports medicine because um, because of the uh, love of sport uh, i am um, i'm a very um, i've been into a lot of sports so i i really understand you know as a doctor it was very important for me to um, treat a person even if uh, you know he's not a athlete or uh, you know just a regular person who can do his or her regular you know activity physical activity so you know having gone through a lot of injuries myself so after having done sports medicine it gave me a better understanding of how to look at a person whether he's an athlete uh, or, or a non-athlete because a lot of lot of Injuries, which I see now, uh, you know, it, it was an eye opener for me that, you know, I started kind of, uh, you know, wore a different glasses and I started looking at, uh, you know, even if a 40, 50 year old person came or somebody comes with the osteoarthritis. So it gave me a, a very good understanding, a very wholesome, holistic approach towards uh, treating patients. So um, I see about, I would say about, uh, you know, 50% of my clientele is regular people, you know, who are housewives or who are recreational athletes or who are in their 60s, 70s, want to resume an activity of just a simple walking or getting into yoga, any kind of a regular physical activity. And of course, the, the remaining, I see, uh, you know, very high, um, you know, high level uh, elite athletes. So, um, I mean, it's, uh, I love what I do. And, uh, it just uh, makes it really worthwhile having gone through all that and having just switched from one uh, profession to another. So I think I just finally came home when I did my sports medicine. So this is a very little uh, uh, brief about me. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Renu. Uh, well, you know, since as I informed, it's going to be a Q&A session. So I will ask Dr. Renu a few questions. Uh, okay, uh, Dr. Renu, first one would be, um, can you say in a few words about uh, Bengaluru as the sports coaching hub? Is it a dy dynamic place in terms of sports activity? Uh, why is the center of sports injuries important for the city? Uh, see, I've been in Bangalore since... Um since uh, 1985 i came as early as that in bangalore and of course it was a very beautiful sleeping city and uh, over a period of time i have seen that it has it has it's become suddenly become a young very young city because uh, in 90s the it came into bangalore Bangalore became an IT hub. And uh, with the result, there was this very young population migrating from different parts of the country to the city. And we all know that IT is a very, um, very sedentary job. And, you know, they keep very bizarre timings, which are catering to, to the West. So these are the people, you know, who, um, who basically wanted to just get out of those glass houses, so-called fancy offices, and I wanted to do something, you know, uh, over the weekend or just to keep themselves physically fit. 
So uh, from the uh, from late 1990s to early 2000s, there was a sudden boom. I mean, I saw, uh, you know, I, I'm a runner myself, I'm a cyclist as well. So I saw a whole lot of cycling clubs coming in and a whole lot of running clubs across the city. You know, there were different running clubs, there were weekend running clubs, there were, you know, it just people just started getting out of the house and started, you know, exercising and started doing something really positive. Of course, the weather uh, in Bangalore really helps. And, uh, you know, it's, um, it, it's kind of, uh, yes, it is. It's become, over a period of time, it's become a very, very, uh, uh, it, it's, um, it, it's, I think it's um, become a center. It's become a city where athletes now, the, you know, the elite athletes come from uh, across the country to train themselves. So we have state of art, uh, you know, uh, centers over here, something like uh, CSC, which is, uh, you know, uh, Dravid Padukone uh, Center, which is, which has come up in North Bangalore. It's a, you know, it caters to a whole lot of sports. And I mean, I've gone there and interacted with athletes and, you know, uh, you know, treated them over there. And I see there are people from Punjab and, you know, the football clubs and the cricket clubs, they all send their athletes, you know, for uh, for, for the training in Bangalore. So soccer clubs, there's so many soccer clubs which have come up and uh, again, swimming, it, it's a hub where, uh, you know, there's a huge population, um, you know, of those so-called wannabe swimmers and who are training for the international uh, events, they come to Bangalore to uh, train. So, uh, uh, for some reason, it's 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 like suddenly you know uh, become such a huge place for sports and you name the sport, uh, Bangalorians uh, play here. You know, beat uh, you know even your uh, tennis or uh, squash every single sport and there are people i mean the starting from you know the school kids and, and i've seen schools also there are schools which are catering to you know uh, the you know kind of having sports as a curriculum and they have set up their academies where they're training these uh, young athletes so um, and also uh, indian army has got the biggest uh, you know um, center which is the called uh, engineering center meg it's called and it's spread over more than 100 acres where we have 25 disciplines where uh, the you know olympians and other international players they are being uh, trained so yes i would say um, bangalore has has grown so much when it comes to sports and it has got so much to offer to the athletes uh, from uh, different uh, different parts of the country uh, thank you doctor now the second question would be um, how is the rec recreational sports or the exercise scene in bengaluru what kind of sports are becoming popular what factors are driving popularity of recreational sports or exercise see the factors like i mentioned earlier because it's uh, it's 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 a young city because there's a whole lot of it crowd over here and uh, you know they want to get out of the offices and they want to exercise they want to do something you know which keeps them fit so um, whether they are conditioned, whether they are they have never done sports or not, it doesn't matter. They just want to go out and, you know, I think what started off as, you know, uh, they, they started uh, running, they started cycling. So with the result, whole lot of cycling clubs got formed and whole lot of running clubs got formed. So, um, uh, yes, and the housewives, they started, uh, you know, coming out and, they wanted to do walking, they want to do running. So you see, you go to any marathon that's happening in Bangalore, you will find people from all walks of life, from all age groups, you know, uh, trying to, uh, you know, do some sort of uh, physical activity. So yes, recreational sports have uh, become very, very popular. And it's, um, you know, it's... Um, and I mean, you, you find they take up any kind of sport, you know, any kind of sport they can get their hands on, you know, accessibility. I mean, we know traffic in Bangalore. So accessibility also uh, is a huge uh, thing. So we have academies mushrooming across the city. We have, uh, you know, um, you know, the, the gyms, we have uh, fitness centers uh, mushrooming across the city. So it, in this city offers every kind of sport to anyone who want to take up at any stage in life. Okay. And uh, doctor, your next question would be, you know, what are the common injuries you see in Bangalore for recreational sports exercise? Uh, which sports are these commonly related to? And also, uh, which parts of the body are most vulnerable? 
Um, see, Mega, it depends on what sports you have taken up, you know, as your recreational uh, sport, uh, as a recreational athlete, sorry. So it could be, let's say you want to, a lot of people are playing badminton, you know, you come, come back from the work, the apartment complexes, they are, they're offering badminton courts or even squash courts or tennis courts. So these are all, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, so-called uh, the throwing events like you know your shuttle events and your racket are uh, the same so people who are playing tennis or pl people who are playing squash or people who are playing badminton uh, you know they will definitely have upper limb injuries that is uh, you know injuries in the upper body it could be the shoulder injury or it could be uh, and also a low back injury as well so people who are into running they will uh, they will uh, get more of low body injuries you know in a sense they will they tend to injure their back they tend to injure their knees they tend to you know um, you know get you know entire back even the cervical depending on the posture you know like i said most of these recreation at least from they don't really go through uh, you know a screening they don't really go to a doctor and say okay i mean can i take up this activity is it suitable for my body type or not so they just it's whatever fancies them they just kind of take up right so not realizing whether their body is fit enough to uh, you know play their sport so uh, you know the Whichever sport you take up, whether you take up the racket sport or you take up running or you take up any endurance sport, what happens is, you know, uh, if they are not fit enough, their back, their lower back, it, it is going to be vulnerable uh, to any kind of an injury. So, uh, you know, they, they most of them, they have weak core. So what I see in my practice is a lot of lower back injuries and a lot of shoulder injuries, a lot of knee injuries, as well as the, you know, foot injuries. So it, again, like I said, swimmers, they come primarily with shoulder injuries and with a lower back injury. So it all depends on what sport you're playing and uh, whether you, you understand your body type or whether you're conditioned enough to take up that sport or not. So it, it, it can be varied kind of injuries. It's, uh, yeah. So some of the injuries are very common to all, uh, all sports, like I said, lower back injuries and uh, you know even the knee injuries they're, they're very common to all sports whether it's a racket sport or it's just purely running or is it just playing basketball or it's just playing you know throw ball or netball or whatever yeah okay and uh, doctor in which uh, age group do you see the most injuries related to uh, recreational sports all age groups like i said uh, you know there there are people from different walks of life there are people uh, across all age groups you know, they all just want to get out of the house and just do something. So, uh, you know, elderly people come to me with injuries and uh, young people come to me with injuries. Housewives, they come to me with injuries in their mid-40s and all that. So it's not limited to any particular age group. Yes, of course, you know, like I said, the schools are introducing a lot of sports into their curriculum. So um, I also happen to see a lot of young athletes, you know, who, who come with uh, injuries. But like, I wouldn't say it's like, very specific to one particular age group it, it's like all kinds all kinds okay and also you know uh, what factors are driving injuries in bangalore uh, for the recreational sports what are the main causes you know and, and how much uh, is people's behavior to be blamed for all this uh, i didn't understand your question the second part behavior in the sense uh, so in, in the, the sense, sense yeah, in the, sense, in the sense, doctor, that what are they doing wrong, which increases the chances of forgetting these injuries? Okay, so uh, uh, ideally speaking, uh, Sanjay, whenever you embark on any sport, any sport, uh, it is always important to uh, you know see your healthcare provider. You know, you could be having hypertension, you could be having diabetes, you could be having you know, a, you know, like because of the sedentary lifestyle, low back ache, which could be just like a niggle here and there. You could be having you know early onset of arthritis. It's always very very important to you know uh, go to your healthcare provider and 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 just ask, okay, am I fit to play the sport? Like, unfortunately, I've seen the trend in Bangalore, or most of the people, I guess, maybe across the country, Delhi is very, I mean, they also have a lot of sports, Bombay also has a lot of sports, you know, recreational sports. So most of the people, their attitude is, okay, I want to do running, or I want to do cycling, because I want to get fit. So when they come to me with injuries, so I mean, I have to sit and talk to them, that you have to make your body fit, condition it to a certain level and then get into the sport so that you don't injure yourself, right? So that people don't understand. People do not want to invest 
in a good gear like you know their uh, gear in the sense i'm talking about the proper shoes you know for racket sports you need different kind of shoes for running you need different kind of shoes for cycling you need different kind of shoes for basketball you need different kind of shoes the make of the shoe is is in such a manner that it prevents injuries you know all these sports are endurance you know weight bearing activities you know if you don't wear a proper shoes and if your feet are not uh, you know uh, biomechanically uh, you know aligned then you are in for a trouble you know if your feet are not aligned you are bound to hurt your knees your heels and your lower back over a period of time so unfortunately amongst the uh, the so called recreational athletes they i get to see them only when they get injured so when you go into the detail history they will say oh i've been wearing the same shoe for the last 3 years in the last four years i haven't changed my shoe it looks absolutely fine and then i have to actually show the shoe to them look you know how it has worn off and how it's not giving you any kind of a support and then i have to just tell them like you know look at your feet you know they are not aligned and you you're causing more damage you a lot of overweight people they say okay i want to start running so that i can lose weight so i just tell them no okay fine you're overweight but it doesn't matter you know you build up your core you you just get your feet analyze you go uh, you know uh, you go to uh, you go and see your doctor you know you could be having a heart disease you see lifestyle disease is very very common amongst uh, you know this younger crowd amongst you know, the age group of 30s and 40s they are all you know highly stressed out and you know they uh, you know they they have imbalances of the muscle because they're sitting all the time certain muscles they become short and they become tight and that's the reason it you know it, it causes whole lot of problems and then they get up and friday they want to go out for run they want to do cycling so they basically taking uh, taking uh, you know uh, you you are subjecting yourself you are basically waiting for an injury to happen and in sports uh, injuries most of the injuries i would say about more than 80% of the injuries are overuse injuries when i say overuse injuries they develop over a period of time over 6 months over 1 year depending on how much you use and abuse your body right so that's when i get to see them which is very very unfortunate sometimes the damage done is too much and then you have to just tell them don't play don't do this sport maybe change your activity don't do a weight bearing activity switch over to swimming but then it's like it's just just the attitude of the youngsters you know like they they have this i can do anything so there is a lot of talking involved uh, you know to kind of educate them so the proper lack of proper uh, you know a uh, uh, lot of proper you know not not wearing proper gear not uh, warming up properly not stretching not conditioning their bodies not uh, you know uh, having a basic health check okay can i can i do this you know is is the reason why the over you these injuries happen in these recreational athletes see what happens also in an elite athlete you know an athlete whose job whose profession is his sport right so they have their trainers they have coaches who are basically monitoring this uh, monitoring their training right so they will tell them at some point okay fine no now you know you need to go and see a doctor because this is what i see is not right so these recreational athletes they're not being monitored by anyone they're not being trained by anyone so i see a lot of people they they have an injury they go to the net they say okay fine i'm running i've got this injuries and i'm going to self treat myself so you know unfortunately that's the trend but i hope it does change um you know i hope people do realize that you know it is important to bring your fitness level to a certain level to embark on any kind of an activity thank you doctor neha there is a question in the chat box yes uh, i'll just take up the question so doctor we have a question from one of our journalists here so the entire globe globe is in an olympic fever indian youngsters are interested and enthusiastic about olympics is there specific sports injury clinics and specialists are available in india for this um see uh, mega uh, sports physician in our country you know we don't even have the specialization over here you know there is uh, i mean there are a couple of institutes who are doing but it's not the way i have done it in university of bath in uk and you know that was the hub 
bath is a hub way because it's like a very high altitude in uk so uh, the athletes come to bath and they you know they come and train there and i mean i've been exposed to a state of art kind of a you know ex exercise physiology center and the training center and where they are you know it's it's a whole lot and the billions of dollars which goes into this kind of this uh, sports industry so uh, you they they take up uh, you know their jobs very very seriously and they really people actually go to the sports position unfortunately in our country we don't have that kind of a trend i mean i think i mean sometimes i i feel that you know i did my sports medicine way too early because we are still i think a couple of decades behind you know people still they when they have an injury they go to an orthopedic surgeon and uh, and unfortunately orthopedic surgeons training does not entail uh, does not involve you know looking at a patient uh, patient's biomechanics and and be able to assess that you know why in the first place is got a knee injury or a heel injury or something like as simple as plantar fasciitis is why has he got that because their training is very different so we don't have very many sports medicine doctor i would say there are a handful of sports medicine doctors in our country and you know and an exclusive just sports medicine there are very few you can probably you know count them uh, on the fingers of one hand so that's something which is which is very sad and we do require more sports medicine physician we do require this is the need of the hour because in our country sports are becoming very popular and we are taking up this international events very very seriously and there are kids from you know very low social back uh, social economic background they are training on their own with inadequate uh, you know Uh, in educate uh, uh, gear and uh, you know absolutely no supervision and with no doctors to go to really to address their injuries or to you know as sports medicine physician we also work at improving the performance of an athlete so that is a huge gap that we have in our country so i mean i just hope we have uh, something uh, you know um you know a medical uh, what do you say council or you know the colleges they wake up and they do realize that you you need to really invest in something called state of art kind of a center where they start actually luring doctors you know uh, or 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 uh, the upcoming doctors or the new doctors to kind of take up the specialty because it is going to be huge because what i see is it is a science of future because nobody really wants to uh, get injured nobody really wants to go to the doctors nobody wants a knee replacement or anything so if you can actually arrest few things looking at you know just a simple examination of um, you know of uh, of a patient with different set of glasses then it it will you know uh, it will improve the active life of an individual uh, you know it will extend the active life of an individual and we need to make a population um, physically very active and i think if something that we have learned from this pandemic is that yes we all need to be physically active and it, uh, there there studies you we know it for for a fact you know exercise improves immunity exercise improves longevity and uh, you know it just kind of it's it's everything i mean it it's is good for the mental health physical health every everything so yes there is a huge gap in sports medicine doctors in our country thank you doctor okay. uh, mukund does that answer your question mukund sir so uh, we will move on to the next questions now yeah so uh hello yes yeah so dr renu we would also like to know you know if you spotted any uh, trends over the years when it comes to injuries and uh, recreational sports any kind of uh, trends which you must have noticed yes uh, see uh, since 2000 since the beginning of 2020 when the pandemic hit us all uh, i have seen you know everybody has been locked up in their houses and uh, it's unfortunate that uh, athletes you know the young athletes or elite athletes they are unable to train um, so and then you know and this uh, this new trend of you know this zoom you know zoom meetings zoom exercises zoom yoga classes all that is uh, you know it's it's is booming i mean that uh, you know that trend is really booming now i have seen uh, you know 
I, I would say from the second lockdown onwards, you know, when we uh, got back to the hospitals in our practice, you know, I have seen patients coming, uh, you know, saying that, you know, I was doing an online yoga class, I was doing online weight training or a fitness class, and I've hurt my, uh, you know, hurt my shoulder, I've hurt my back. So, uh, I would say, you know, this really works for a person who has been trained uh, under uh, under a trainer or a coach for an elite elite athlete because they inherently kind of they have been trained to, uh, you know, uh, correct their technique and do it the right way. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, in a, in a person, you know, who's sitting at home, okay, fine. I mean, I can't step out of the house. I've never exercised. Let me just join this class, right? So they, they are the ones who, you know, you can't on the, on the, on the, on the, you know, screen, you can't really, I mean, uh, correct the technique of a person. You can just tell the person, theoretically, you can tell the person, but you can't really correct the technique the way you can correct in person. So, you know, there are pluses uh, to it, very few pluses, I would say, but there are a lot of minuses also, because pluses only for the athletes who really know who are focusing on the technique and the trainer is the one who's guiding them, right? But I also uh, have, uh, you know, come across, uh, you know, young athletes. Uh, see what has happened in pandemic in the young athletes. I mean, this is a trend I've see, seen across all the, you know, growing kids. When, uh, you know, in this pandemic, a lot of kids, they have, a, you know, certain time, certain phase when they have growth spurts, right? So they have grown taller and with the result, and if they're following the same tree, uh, the training, and what happens is in these young athletes, the bones, they grow longer quickly during the growth spurts, but the muscles and the ligaments, they take time to catch up. Right. So the muscles and ligaments are attached to the bones. So what happens is they come with, you know, this uh, knee pain, which is all, which is very common, uh, you know, problem in, uh, you know, the age between anywhere between 11 to 13 years uh, when they, you know, then they shoot up. So they start developing the knee pain. And if they continue to train with that, they can cause a lot of damage. So and heel pain, they come with the heel pain also. So they, their movements kind of become awkward because of the tight muscles, uh, because of the growth spurt. So they are the ones who have also come with the injuries that, you know, this has happened. I've got a heel pain, I've got a knee pain. And with the result, I kept running, I kept training in the house. I've also developed a back pain. So um, like I said, online classes, the school, I mean, I, I'm not uh, uh, a great, uh, you know, um, advocate of online classes because I think fitness is something if you're starting off new if you're starting off fresh it has to be monitored the person has to be trained properly the technique has to be corrected uh, by somebody so that the person doesn't really injure himself okay got thank it. you got it. doctor also you know uh, we would like to know does COVID diminish the capacity of the body to Individual body to individual in heavy exercise or sports. Can you throw some light on what the medical literature says? Uh, and also, what is your uh, suggestion to post-COVID patients willing to take up exercise and sports again for uh, post a recovery? Um, so, um, over the last year, uh, you know, after the pandemic hit us, I think we've understood the disease much better uh, as compared to what we knew initially across the world. I mean, we didn't have any knowledge about this disease and how it, it was affecting the body, right? So uh, we know now that, you know, COVID, uh, you know, this uh, virus, it, it does cause uh, damage to the heart, to the brain, to the lungs, and uh, again, to the kidneys. And a lot of people after they recover from COVID, they will experience lingering symptoms, uh, you know, such as, uh, you know, uh, muscle muscle pains aches and pain loss of stamina breathlessness or uh, you know exhaustion so um, you know um, we also know uh, that you know these uh, symptoms they need to be monitored very very carefully in the in the months that follow after they have recovered now but Another thing that we don't really know is how is this COVID virus, what kind of a damage it has done to a particular person because it affects every uh, you know, individual uh, differently. 
So uh, when a person gets, let's say, uh, a, a person who's just physically active, who goes to the regular walks or just do the yoga and all that, and they have been tested uh, positive. So, so first, obviously, during uh, that uh, phase of uh, quarantine, they should not exercise at all. So we have encouraged patients to do just gentle stretches and breathing exercises, very, very gentle, slow stretches and breathing exercises. So after have, they have recovered, they should take minimum 10 to 15 days days to get back into the physical activity. Now, there are athletes also who have been tested positive with COVID. Now, if they have very mild symptoms or no symptoms at all, uh, that is, but they are positive, they need to, after the quarantine phase, again, they need to build up their, you know, uh, training over 10 to 15 periods of uh, 10 to 15 days of time. But if an athlete has, uh, you know, uh, had uh, the, when he had uh, COVID, he, it was the symptoms were moderate to severe, then post recovery, he must, must see a healthcare provider who would really, who should actually do a basic ECG and run some blood tests. Why ECG? Now, uh, COVID virus, like any other virus, it basically, you know, uh, cause uh, inflammatory response to the heart muscle, right? Which we call it as myocarditis. The heart muscle basically swells up. So when they do a little physical activity also, they will have extreme breathlessness. So to rule out, you know, uh, ideally speaking, with, uh, you know, these guys with severe symptoms, they should do an ECG, run tests, and uh, take, uh, you know, um, uh, you know the um, permission from the doctor. Okay, when can I, be, uh, you know, get back to uh, my uh, training? Really. So uh, after uh, they get into the training, it should be spread over seven stages. That is, these ten days when they are doing graduated physical activity or training, it should be stretched out over, you know, over seven stages. Right. So basically, it should be done under the training of a trainer who can actually monitor the symptomatology in, a, in an athlete. So if, you, if you're doing a mild activity and your breathlessness and increase in the heart rate is way beyond, uh, you know, uh, the activity that you are doing, then of course, again, stop immediately and, and check with your doctor what needs to be done. And if you're not an elite athlete, you don't have a coach or a trainer, get a family member or get somebody to monitor your symptoms. It is very important because we have seen across the world that, you know, uh, people after recovering from COVID, when they've gone back, you know, it's, and they just, I mean, because you're physically active, you're, you're just dying to get back to your activity and you get this weakness and all that. So you feel, these people feel that if I exercise, I'm going to get fitter, I'm going to get more energy. I mean, it's the wrong way of thinking because, you know, their body is going to take some time to recuperate, to come out of, uh, you know, this, the effects that the COVID has uh, left really. So, um, yeah, get back into the activity very, very slowly. You know, let's say if somebody has been training for a marathon, right? So uh, it requires a certain kind of a training to go and run a marathon. So after recovering from COVID, he say, okay, fine, let me just get back to the same training immediately. No, that's wrong. So you've got to, again, baby steps. You've got to start off very, very slowly and build it over a period of time. So in about, about 15 days or two weeks time, you know, you're fit to get back to your full training and then you don't need to be really supervised. Uh, thank you, doctor. Um, do we have any questions from media, please? Hi, I do. Hello. Hi, uh, can you hear yes, me? Raksha. Yes. Hi, uh, doctor. Uh, um, my name is Suraksha. I'm a reporter with Deccan Hill Bangalore. Um, I cover health here and uh, I had a question. Would you recommend any exercises for those who have re recovered from COVID to basically increase their lung power to, to strengthen, you know, any chest exercises or uh, anything that will help them build endurance and, uh, you know, run faster or longer, uh, those who are experiencing difficulties? Hi, Suraksha. It's a very interesting question. I think I kind of partly covered it when I spoke before. So after you recover from COVID, um, depending on uh, how your symptoms are, you know, when you um, 
uh, when you had COVID. If, they, if you had no symptoms or mild symptoms, then you just start off with breathing exercises and start off with an activity for about, just go for a walk for about 15 minutes. Do that for a couple of days. And on the third day, increase that walk and you can break into a little bit of a jog and you can extend it up to 20 days uh, for 20 minutes. And then from fourth day onwards, you can, you know, extend it up to 30 minutes. And after about five to six days, you can go for about 45 minutes walk. Okay, you can break into, jo uh, into a jog in between, right? So don't straight away, uh, you know, get into uh, jogging. And also uh, to increase the lung capacity, endurance activity, there's nothing like endurance, act endurance activity that is your uh, walking and running. But like, since that is gonna be in a graduated form, it's a good idea to do uh, breathing exercises. We have pranayama, which is fantastic. So just do the breathing exercises. I have gone through some studies, you know, people who've had severe, uh, you know, uh, symptoms during, uh, of the COVID symptoms. The, even though the virus is out of your body, it does leave certain areas of the lungs, uh, you know, affected. And your, your whole oxygen, uh, what do you say, exchange in, on the lung surface does get affected. So very slowly do the breathing exercises and uh, along with your endurance activity and that should be, and it should be done over over 15 days for you to kind of get back into, you'll know it. And if you have shortness of breath, if you feel dizzy, if you develop a little bit of a chest pain, you need to stop immediately, okay? So basically listen to your body, listen to your body, be very, very aware. You may feel okay, but be very, very aware of what is really happening to your body because you can't just, uh, I mean, it can be, you know, if, if, you, if you don't know, if you've had very severe symptoms during COVID, it can be fatal. People have died across the, across the world, you know, uh, post COVID having just fit guys, 30 year old, 20 year olds gone back into their full training and suddenly collapsed, yeah? So it has to be done very, very gradually. Thank you, ma'am. That answers my question. Uh, but uh, have you personally, uh, you know, uh, seen people? Have you treated them? You know, gotten them across that threshold after recovery from COVID to get back to competitive sports? Yes, yes, I have. So yesterday, interestingly, I had a 24-year-old 24 24-year-old guy and he came and he, were, so his, when he called me, he said, I've got severe back pain and I got my MRI done. My MRI is absolutely fine. And, and I might get headaches and I get upper body pain. I get mid back pain, low back pain. My pain is radiating down to my legs. So my first thing was, you know, like, have you got an MRI done? It's a radiating pain. So you, you're you looking at a patient differently, just listening to his history, right? So once he came and I just examined him, his MRI was normal, there was no problem, twice hit by COVID, both the time severe symptoms. And he is, he's just, he said, I just get breathless very soon, right? So, you know, you have to chart out a different plan to get them back. And it's all a 24 year old guy who was physically very active. So, uh, you know, it's just, a lot of people really don't know, you know, what is happening. So no matter how good you feel that you've come out of your COVID and all that, please take it, uh, you know, um, really seriously that, you know, we don't really know. Studies still haven't come out how it affects each individually, young, middle-aged or even old person. So we still don't know the after effects and how it is. I mean, we definitely know that, you know, that it affects the heart muscle. Myocarditis has been seen, people dying, suddenly just drop dead on the field and that's it. So I, I hope that answers your question. Yes, just one last question. Uh, so when, when does someone know that they have to call it quits, at least with something as serious as competitive sports? You know, talking so, to yeah, so uh, if you develop breath, shortness of breath, right? You you start feeling dizzy. You start, uh, you know, um, you know, you start feeling lightheaded. You start uh, getting, uh, you know, you measure your, if you're just walking and you, you know, you feel you're getting palpitations or you check your pulse and your pulse is like racing. So which is not basically equivalent to your, your, your response, your body's response, your heart's response is way too much 
compared to the activity that you're doing, you're just probably walking and your heart is racing. So that's the time when you need to actually stop and you need to go and see a doctor. Ideally speaking, a, you know, a doctor or your healthcare person should do, if you've had severe symptoms during COVID, no matter how young or old you are, basic ECG should be done to uh, know that, you know, the heart is fine, really. Thank you. You need to very basically stop if you experience uh, all these unpleasant symptoms. Hello, Suraksha? Yes, that answers my question. Thank you. Okay, okay thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Reno. Uh, Dr. Reno, now we move on to the next question. So, can uh, you please Megha, just tell ask, us... uh, Megha, please ask if somebody else has a question. Yeah. Uh, any more media for the questions, please? Please just unmute yourself and ask your question. No problem. Yeah, Mega, you can ask your question. Yeah. Uh, so, do so, Dr. Renu, uh, can you please tell us, you know, what can people do to prevent their chances of getting injuries from recreational sports or exercise, uh, especially the weekend warriors and the youth? Uh, what are your recommendations for safety? Um, see, um, one is it's it is nice. It would be it be it, it'll be a good idea if you want to, you know, pursue the activity and remain injury free to see your healthcare provider, see your doctor. Uh, that can I embark on this particular activity or not? Right? It could be your GP, general physician itself. Right? You don't have to look for a sports medicine person. I mean, if you can find a sports medicine doctor, even better because that person can do your entire biomechanical assessment and can ask relevant questions. Uh, from you, uh, which would be leading questions in terms of, you know, give an insight to the doctor, you know, okay, what is your body type and can you do this activity or not? Now, proper conditioning is important. You know, you don't, you know, I mean, if let's say a 50 year old wants to just go and, uh, you know, say, okay, I want to just start playing tennis or I want to just start playing badminton. So the basic thing he can start doing is, okay, build his endurance first. Okay. One is start going for a walk, a brisk walk that will basically build up his endurance a little bit, right? And also uh, it will condition his heart and the lungs, right? And also it will condition his muscles. And if he can add some sort of a gym-based exercise or learn exercises, he can do something on, uh, you know, on his own even better. A proper warm-up is essential, whether you're going for a walk or you're going for a jog or whether you're doing a gym workout to condition yourself. So proper warm-up before your exercise um, uh, and also proper stretching, very, very important. Now, stretching is important to improve the flexibility because you cannot go and start playing a sport with very tight muscles. You know, you have tight calves, you've got tight hip flexors, you've got tight thighs and all that, it's going to put a lot of load, a lot of strain on your weight-bearing joints, on your knees. It's also going to load your lower back, uh, you know, abnormally. And it's also going to, you know, uh, uh, make, uh, you know, make you, uh, you, you know, get you into very awkward movements with your feet. So flexibility is very, very important. Uh, protective equipment, you know, like let's say you want to play badminton, you know, check with the person, if there's a coach over there, what kind of a racket should I buy? It should not be a very heavy racket. The racket should be light. Also, you need to check. I mean, these are simple, simple things. These are the questions I ask. You check the weave of the racket. Is it too tight or is it too, uh, you know, loose? Because it is going to affect your wrist and, uh, you know, you can prevent wrist injuries if you, or you can also prevent overloading of your shoulder or your elbow. You know, um, also um, that's that covers your suitable equipment and appropriate training. It's a good idea if you are starting a sport for the first time. Don't learn from the internet. Don't learn from the YouTube. Please go learn from a trainer. Take two, three classes from a trainer who's experienced to an academy and, you know, like this my technique, right? Check all that. And also, um, you know, don't just kind of dive into the sport that because you love it so much or you just want to get fit very quickly. So, Make sure you give your body enough time to rest. Your, your frequency, your intensity, and the duration of the sport.
Hello, Mika. Hello, Sanjay. Yeah, I think there's some technical issue from uh, the doctor's room. Yeah. So we'll just wait for a minute to come back. Yeah. Uh, uh, is uh, does the media have any questions uh, for the doctor? Uh, Sanjay, we have uh, one question from one of our regional media. So they would want Dr. Renu to speak in Canada. This is for an online channel. I think there's a power, power cut in the doctor's place. Can you please just call her and just see? Ah, she's back. Hello? Yeah, doctor, we lost you there. Uh, doctor, you are muted. Doctor Renu. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, the lights have gone, so the I lost the vibe for for a minute. So the surface, last but not the least, the surface on which you play is very important. People don't think about that. You know, they just think, okay, I'm, I'm wearing proper shoes. So you know, there are when you're playing, when you're doing an endurance activity, the ground reaction forces are very, very important to protect you to to protect your uh, you know weight bearing joints, your knees and your ankles as well as your uh, lower back. So uh, choose the surface right it should not be you know there are different kind of you know you, you if, if there are wooden surfaces there are there are those uh, artificial turfs then you have concrete surface the concrete surface is the worst for running and playing any kind of a sport because it is going to uh, you know uh, kind of there are going to be a lot of ground reaction forces which are going to be acting on your body and which are uh, you know which can cause injury to the feet and to your weight bearing joints so all these factors if you take into account Anybody can play sport and uh, no matter what, uh, you know, uh, fitness level you're at, whether you're obese or you're fit or not, it's just these basic criteria. If they are looked into, you know, you can go a long, you can go a long way and you can keep yourself injury free. Thank you, Dr. Deepa, would you like to ask your question in Kannada? Hello, Sanjay. Yeah, yeah. Megha. Uh, yeah, I think we've lost Dr. Reno again. No, no, Dr. No. Reno is very much here. Okay, okay. I'm very much here. So, you just, Megha, I think we have one last question for the doctor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, doctor, we have one query from the media here, from our regional media. So, we request you to please speak in Canada. I'll try. I'll try my best. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, doctor, they have a query. Uh, you know, uh, about, you know, again, the post-recovery COVID um, sports activity, how do they restart? If you can tell this in Canada, that would be great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. So, Canada-speaking people, please forgive my Canada if I'm like, I go wrong. So, I'll just try my best to answer the question. So, um, so uh, post-COVID, uh, COVID, okay, 14 days quarantine agi de, Alva. For quarantine ad mele, nidana ke activities start maar beko, right? Uh, 15 minutes ke walking maar beko, amele uh, dina 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 sirf 5 minutes, 10 minutes increase maar beko, ali swasta sari agila, hade no agide, ali jasti tired na, I mean simple walk maar dera jasti. Um, uh, what do you say? Jasti uh, heart rate bharta hai dehli, palpitation bharta hai deh. Tiredness agi de, activity stop maar beko. Ali doctor ki hogi, ali thoughts beko. In again in blood test maar beko, blood test maari, basic ECG maari. Ali 15 days, yaradu vara beko for full recovery. Amele, you know, you can do your full activity. Uh, thank you, doctor. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, doctor, there's one more query, you know, one of the uh, journalists would also like to know, you know, do we have any programs or awareness camps or educational camps in the prevention of sports injuries uh, from our center? This is a question from Mukun from Inado. Uh, you mean from IPSC center? Yes, from IPSC center. Yes. Do we have any camps or? Or do we plan um, to? Do we plan to? Do we plan to? 
think Dr. Pankaj will uh, answer that better because uh, I think uh, most of it, he's got a bigger picture, a bigger plan because I, uh, what we have started uh, only sports medicine as of now in Bangalore. So, um, you know, we will be basically uh, doing that awareness camps and, and we do plan to take it across the country and uh, interact with the academies and uh, have these kind of camps you know, the basic assessment of the athletes and also even for the general population, we do plan that. Dr. Pankaj. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Renu. Uh, so yes, definitely we have, uh, do have such plans. Uh, so we are coming with the multiple uh, uh, city, uh, uh, just saying our units in multiple cities and every city will have, uh, every unit, uh, wherever we come, uh, will have this department of the sports medicine. So that is one of our main major vertical in our all of our IPC hospitals. Uh, regarding the awareness in the CMEs, yes, definitely we st have already started doing that and we uh, just participated around two months back. We participated in the, one of the international conference. So that's also on the sports medicine by Man Mano Rechna University. So that's a university is having the uh, sports medicine is sports uh, uh, as a major vertical in their university. So they conducted one conference and IPC participated in that. Uh, similarly, we have some uh, universities that in Punjab also, sports uh, uh, universities in Punjab. Uh, recently, uh, Delhi government has also announced one sports university in Delhi. Uh, so we are in talks with these people, these universities also, so that we can start some sports medicine uh, as a specialty uh, post MBBS. So that we are also planning. Uh, we already started some on pain medicine. We have started some postgraduate diploma program, and we are to going to soon going to come with a sports medicine diploma, or maybe if it is possible, MD in sports medicine. So we are in talks with the university, and uh, I'm sure that in within next uh, one year we are going to have a specialty of the sports medicine. So we are trying for that definitely. Uh, we'll continue uh, some education program, um, some camps. Uh, or CME programs for the doctors, basically, uh, especially for the physiotherapists and the patient and the doctors who are uh, dealing with the um, rehabilitation and uh, physiotherapy. So uh, we are going to have these kind of CMEs with them uh, to make them aware of what exactly sports medicine, how it is different from the normal physiotherapy. So we have plans. Too. We do have plans. Uh, thank, thank you, Dr. Pankaj. Thank you. Uh, well, now uh, I would like to extend a big thank you to our speakers and uh, members of the media here who took the time out from their busy schedules to join us today. It was indeed a very insightful and enlightening session, and I'm sure our participants gathered a lot of information as well. Uh, thank you, Dr. Reno. Uh, do mail us in case uh, you all have any further questions. Many thanks again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.